I can't do it anymore. The Pyrenees really dealt us a tough set of cards. I didn't expect it to be quite as different as it is to the Alps. It feels very, very different. It feels like you're in a completely different country. Climbs, a bit more spiky, they've got a bit more attitude. Yesterday we saw four seasons on one climb. I mean, yesterday we were riding through the clouds for what was only sort of 50 or 60 kilometres. The Alps cater for the skiers, so you find the roads a little bit more forgiving, especially when you've got like rest bikes on bends. Pyrenees are a different animal. They, they, they don't seem to give you that rest bike on the corner, they, they go steeper, so you find yourself having to get out of the saddle just to get around the corner and then just getting back into a rhythm. So it's, yeah, it's a different ball game altogether. A very unique place that makes you challenge yourself probably harder than the Alps because it's so unexpected the, the challenges it throws at you. The difference with the Pyrenees to the Alps that, that I've found here is, is just how wet it is. Keeping warm was very challenging. On the descent yesterday I had four layers on and was absolutely frozen. Thought I'd get hypothermia, it was so cold. The real problem today is it's cold, really cold. You've gone from 30 odd degrees the other day to 12, 13 degrees coming down there, which might not seem a lot, but when you're coming down a 15 plus mile an hour, it's really, really cold. Sorry, I'm, I'm shivering a bit. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm wearing every single piece of clothing I have with me. I think just with the mist and just the general temperature, it's just been impossible to get warm. Even going up, I've been going up four layers on gloves and then you just literally when you stop that's it you know the core body temperature drops and it's just really really difficult to get you say your body temperature back up i've never been so cold in my life i've never been so wet in my life and i've never sweated so much in my life all at the same time everyone's really tired legs just don't really want to turn over feeling extremely fatigued at the moment i have to say to be honest at times i've wanted to fall asleep on the bike and just absolutely exhausted you could tell from the moment we woke up that there was no bantering break at breakfast there was no talk on the bus i think everyone is just exhausted people are getting very tired so let's make sure we stay concentrated we're careful the damp roads white lines a lot of things to think about I don't think anyone who hasn't done this could really appreciate how difficult it is. This has been really hard. This is not something that is a cycling holiday, as a lot of people seem to think we're on. It's incredibly challenging. It's the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. The riders really, really pulled themselves through that. To get through the Pyrenees in the way they did, with, with the bad weather, it was miserable at the top of the climb, we didn't get the views that we might have expected. It's just been stupendous. I think the most amazing uh, aspect of, of the whole thing has been the determination of the riders to succeed. We're coming into Andorra and there's some tunnels and we just shot straight through them. But just before the tunnel, there was a little right-hand turn. We realised we missed a, we missed this turning, so we stopped on a dual carriageway. We've got to walk 3k back up here to get back to the level. And I thought, that ain't going to happen. So uh, we had to roll back into the hotel. I've come all the way to complete the Tour de France and I've missed a tiny, tiny little segment out. I thought, there's no way I can't do that. So the following day was rest day. I thought I'd just got to go back and do it all on my own. It took about, I don't know, about an hour and a half, but I'm really chuffed to do it because if I hadn't have done it, I couldn't have said I've completed the whole of the Tour de France. So that 15k to me meant a lot. Col de Portet just is misery. 16 kilometres at an average of 9%, so very steep, very challenging. We were probably halfway up the climb, maybe a little further. I think we were about 400 metres of elevation from the summit. We came out of the mist and there was the team bus there. That's it. That's it. Right, so well, nobody's gone past nobody's that gone up. that way and this is security guard telling them. The road has been closed, so basically we can't go up there, we can't support the riders, so the riders can't go, go any further. You can't go up, you can't not go on. Come on, do the maths. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing that. It's not safe. 
it's not your worst. It's more dangerous on the last one. I was fully energised. There was no way I wasn't going to go up that hill. Everybody's all on one plane. What's then? not safe about climbing? What, you climbing there on your own and coming, being on your own, and then no one here when you get back? Because that's what you're suggesting. I'm absolutely determined to finish each stage and to be told that you can't go and do the last 400 metres of ascent. Just wasn't going to happen. They've shut it and there's a security guard there telling them that we can't go. So that's not not doing it, that's like being told we can't do it. Yeah, it's a, it's a shame though. So my emotional part of my brain took over. It was just one of those moments. <laughs> 's the top of the climb there were quite a lot of sheep and cows and horses and stuff kind of wandering across the roads I lost my younger brother earlier this year he was an animal lover to the last two kilometers I was thinking about him and thinking about how I wish I could take a picture and send it to him I was obviously like relieved to get to the top, but I think my emotion was more about thinking about my brother and how much I'd missed him and wished I could share that moment with him in some way. One more blind. <laughs> I miss my brother so much. I know, I know. <laughs> I know. I try to think about, um, you know, what we're raising funds for. That, that really helps me um, in not wanting anyone else to lose a loved one earlier than they should be. He'll inspire you to do the next one as well. <laughs> yeah. We want people to keep their family around. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I'm done crying now. <laughs> All good? Maybe, I mean, hit the top again. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you there. You've pushed yourself beyond your limits. My body's given up, my head has up. Why I do this sort of thing is to try and figure out where my breaking point is because I don't really think I have yet and I hope I don't find it out in the next three weeks. <laughs> Pretty much from day two, I've been having stomach issues really. It's a bit of a hang up from the surgery I had from when I was having treatment for um, leukemia myself. It's more difficult for me to absorb high volumes of food. And obviously one of the things that you have to do when you're cycling as much as we've been for the last three weeks is consume a lot of food and consume a lot of sugar. And that basically set off quite prolonged gastrointestinal problems, which was pretty uncomfortable and meant that, you know, I wasn't really getting the nutrition in that I needed to, to be able to sustain all of the cycling that was being demanded. To be honest, I was a little bit surprised it didn't, didn't come along a little bit sooner. Somehow, you know, I dragged my body up that climb and there were so many opportunities where I could have got in a car. I didn't want to get in because I saw that I was quitting um, and I was going to just keep going until I physically couldn't go anymore. I feel like I failed. No, you haven't, Steve. have not failed. <laughs> Steve, you've been ill for two weeks, all right? You haven't failed in the slightest. You've tried harder than anybody it's not else. The easiest condition, right? is it? You've tried harder than anybody else. I was angry. Like I came here to ride the full distance, and obviously I didn't do that. And to me, that represented failure. We can come back and have another go at this. You're watching. You've got to donate to this. Exactly. You're only keeping it to Tour 21. This is what it means to me. Is failure not reaching the summit because you missed it by 10 feet because the weather turned in? Is failure not achieving a particular goal or not being able to cycle around the next corner for whatever reason? You know, the fact that I'm here in the first place is a pretty big success. So I think it's 20 years while we've been out here that I was kind of did my last treatment and was told that I was, you know, cancer free as well. So yeah, it's quite a significant date, I suppose, for me personally. July the 4th has always been a date that it's like, I wouldn't say it's like a birthday, something to celebrate, it's, but it's something that makes me remember why I'm doing things like this. I was diagnosed on July the 4th and told I had three months to live back in 2003. There's nothing more challenging than fighting for your own life, having chemotherapy and radiotherapy, experiencing that in the world of, of cancer and everything. We feel privileged to be here and we do it for others, we do it for people who we've seen lose a battle and we, we, we do it for people who are going to go through the battle in the future. <laughs>